Um, just want to say good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm Major Warren. I'm the Deputy Superintendent here in Fauquier County Public Schools. I'm Amy Akers. I'm the Director of Instruction here at Fauquier County Public Schools. Um, just wanted to say thank you all for the opportunity to kind of share some information with you. We've been getting a lot of um, FAQ questions, as, as you can imagine, um, and thought it might be a good idea that we take some time to just really kind of go through some of those ones that are coming in that are really um, frequent. And our goal today is to just to reassure you a little bit that um, we will be outlining uh, Monday night a little bit more of a structured plan in terms of what the 100% virtual option will look like. But our goal today is again, uh, will be to share some questions and answers with you all that we think might help guide you as you look to make some decisions in terms of whether you're gonna be participating in the two day face-to-face -face model um, or the 100% virtual model. So we're just gonna kind of go through the FAQ kind of one question at a time. Um, we'll ham and egg it a little bit, and uh, whatever I leave out, Amy will fill in, whatever she leaves out, I'll fill in. And so uh, we're gonna make this as interactive as we possibly can. So um, the first question is, if students choose 100% virtual option with FCPS, are they still considered FCPS students? The answer to that question is yes. Um, what we're building is a school within a school model. Um, we will be housing our own FCPS kids within the Blackboard um, uh, platform. Um, these students will stay on our rosters, they'll stay on their school's rosters, um, they will be our students full time, um, and we will be utilize, utilizing SCPS teachers and the virtual Virginia content. So anything else you want to want to add to that? No, I, th I think that, that catches it all. Um, I do think there has been some confusion since we know our teachers are using right. virtual Virginia, and um, our um, decision to use Virtual Virginia's content essentially as a resource for our teachers is just so our teachers and students have a place to start in their planning and their course um, creation. Correct. So we want to make sure that people understand that Virtual Virginia is a program of the Virginia Department of Education and that we've just essentially made it available to our teachers to start to create resources both in the 100% virtual option and in the blended model. All right, you wanna take the next one? Sure. Right. Our next question was, how do I notify FCPS that I need the 100% virtual option for my student? And so earlier this week, the OLR, which is the online registration that parents complete annually, uh, opened. And so that's how you signify your choice, whether you uh, plan on having your student participate in the two-day face-to-face and three days remote blended option, or the 100% virtual option with Fauquier County Public Schools. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, next question, if students choose the 100% virtual option with FCPS, are courses synchronous or asynchronous? And one of the things that we really wanna do is to make sure that we help people understand the vocabulary in terms of um, what we're going to be doing. So the answer to this question is both. Um, our teachers are gonna be engaging students in a 100% virtual model, as we've talked about, um, and we'll be meeting with students synchronously at times. And that's at a designated time on a designated day within a set schedule. All right, so there will be opportunities for students and teachers to engage each other that week synchronously, all at the same time. Um, at the same time, there'll be opportunities for students to work um, and access learning resources asynchronously uh, within a given time frame, but not at a set time. And so there's a fair amount of independent work, as it will um, with students who will be working on the two-day face-to-face model. Um, there will be asynchronous opportunities for students um, to engage in work, but not at a set time and not at a set schedule. So it's important um, that folks understand what that synchronous versus asynchronous um, terminology means. Yeah, that's great. So the next question is, if students choose 100% virtual option with Fauquier County Public Schools, will all courses be offered? And so Major and I were just talking about that this is where our work begins, that based on the student uh, designation in the OLR and based on staff needs that will begin the work of sort of matching up student requests and teacher certifications and we will do our best to offer as many courses as possible using um, virtual platform, you know, using Blackboard and building our courses there. But it is obvious that we won't be able to have a full course listing of offerings. So there may be some courses, specialty electives, um, that might be uh, you know, not offered, that we could offer face-to-face. -face. Um, I, I think I would add to that by saying one of the processes that we're going through right now, you know, our teachers that will be teaching kids in the virtual platform will be Fauquier County Public Schools teachers. Um, we're in the process now of vetting who those teachers will be. And we're gonna, we're gonna marry those teachers up with sections of kids. 
Um, what we can say right now is that we know that K through 12, we're gonna be able to provide 100% um, virtual instruction in, in English, math, social studies, and science. Um, depending on how we go up through the grade level, we're working through the curriculum now to determine what, what types of elective opportunities we may be able to offer in elementary school, i.e. maybe music. Uh, what types of opportunities might we be able to offer in middle school, maybe art, um, CTE, something else. Um, and then we've got to really work with, as we get into the 9 through 12, we've got to work, because it's a 4 by 4 we've got to work with our high school principals and counseling directors to really look at individual students' schedules to make sure that we can, we can map out their schedules relative to the strengths um, and the certification areas that our FCPS teachers are bringing into the virtual platform. So that's really why we're, we're, we're just asking for folks to be patient with us. We, we've got the framework of what we know we want to do, FCPS teachers. All right, we know we're gonna do things within a Blackboard platform. We know where our content is coming from. So between now and August the 10th, we've got to really hammer out the parameters, the framework for that, all right? Um, engaging the teachers that are gonna be um, engaging students, um, getting those folks up to speed and trained. So there's a lot of work to be done between now and August the 10th. So that leads us to our next question about what this virtual experience will be like for our students. <laughs> I, I jumped think. the gun, I probably did. Oh, no, no, you did, <laughs> but yeah, it's great. It's to just say that if you are enrolled in this 100% virtual option with Fauquier County, um, are you still able to participate in the activities offered at our schools? And so the answer to that is yes, that these students who enroll in a virtual option are still Fauquier County Public School students. They work with our teachers, they work you know, um, within Fauquier County Public Schools. And so all of the options that would be available to them if they return to us face-to-face -face are also available to them virtually in terms of activities and sports. Correct, and these are our students, and I think that's important to remember. We do not need anyone going to register at Virtual Virginia. <laughs> we don't need you to do that. Um, we will take care of all of the registration piece in terms of pulling you into, you know, our school within the school. And then I think the question we probably have gotten a lot just from the release of um, some of the information early this week is whether or not this is flexible. Um, and yes, we've made a commitment that at any time students uh, choose to return to the face-to-face -face model, to our blended model option, that they would be able to transition back from the virtual um, platform back to us um, in face-to-face -face options. Correct, and, and some of the other questions that are coming in is, if at some point in time we were to move to a four-day face-to-face uh, model of instruction, will we continue to offer those students a 100% virtual platform if they feel like they're unready, uh, not ready to return at that particular time? And the, the answer to that question is yes. Uh, we'll continue that platform um, as long as it's, it's needed, as long as it's needed. Yeah, so I think it's important to just reiterate here that all of us strongly believe that face-to-face -face is our best um, option and our best way to connect with students and build relationships, but we know we wanted to offer a virtual option. And so, like I said before, we did decide to use Virtual Virginia as a resource right. because we've actually had a partnership with them for years for various reasons and glad that we have um, an opportunity to, through their outreach program, build sort of a deeper relationship and more offerings for right. students. Right, right, good. I'll let you take the next two around. Yeah, so to finish up, in terms of just discussing this 100% virtual learning option, our last question is about um, how we will use those resources. And um, essentially, we do plan on our teachers. Um, uh, Virginia, Virtual Virginia um, is completely aligned to the Virginia standards of learning. And so our virtual teachers who work for us will be able to look through course content, align it to pacing guides that are provided mm -hmm. um, and developed by Fauquier County Public School teachers. Our plan is to use essentially the content that's been built by Virgin, Virtual Virginia, um, still offering the same autonomy our teachers have always had in delivering their course content and um, structuring um, a learning experience for our students, but essentially to use Virtual right. Virginia as a resource so that they don't have to start from scratch, that they have some content to build on, some lesson plan ideas, but largely our, our teachers will use um, that content as a resource to build their courses. But that kind of brings us uh, to the end of our frequently asked questions about the virtual option, but I know we have been getting some others yeah. here recently just yeah. because the information yeah. is coming. And so let me start with a little bit of the timeline relative to the 100% virtual model. Um, and we know that some of the questions have been coming in about 
um, the OLR and the, the, the timeline and deadline that we asked um, parents to designate whether they wanted the AABB model or the 100% virtual. Um, we set an aggressive shoot for date um, for the 27th because we really wanted to start to gather information about um, how many kids we were anticipating the need to serve in a 100% virtual model. What we do want parents to understand is that you do have time beyond the 27th if you wanted to wait until the board meeting to kind of hear some additional information or if this presentation doesn't answer all of the questions that you want to be able to make that designation a little bit later in the week. Uh, we are asking folks to try their best to do that by the 27th. Wouldn't preclude you from changing your mind if you needed to do so after hearing the presentation. Um, but we've got a lot of work to do between July 27th and August 10th um, to um, get our teachers trained. We need to get sections created. We need to pull kids into Blackboard. Um, we've got to get some curriculum work done. And largely a lot of that work is ongoing right now. Um, but the August 10th date to make sure that um, we communicated with you all about the parameters for the 100% virtual option, but we've also had ample opportunity to engage teachers that are going to be teaching in that platform. Um, that we have those couple of weeks to really kind of um, make sure that everybody's on the same page and the communication's been, been done. So that's been one of the questions that's come up. Yeah, um, I think too then um, a lot of the questions are also about the blended learning options. So maybe this is a good place to sort of transition to pick up maybe a few of the FAQs on the blended learning options. So if parents are trying to think about whether or not that schedule will work for their student. Um, so the blended uh, learning option is two days face to face yep. with your teacher where you'll do direct instruction and then provides three days of remote learning. So we know students will be split into two groups. Right. There'll be a group A and a group B. Um, and Monday and Tuesday would be for group A and Thursday and Friday would be for group B. Um, and we just think that this is obviously a way for us to maintain uh, the capacity in our buildings. Um, for 50% capacity of the buildings means we can better adhere to the guidelines Correct. that have been given to us to keep our staff and students um, safe and healthy. Um, so this is why we proposed a blended uh, model. But again, we think face-to-face -face is important and this we feel like this gives us as much time with our students as possible. Correct, and I think the two-day face-to-face piece I think what folks need to understand is that, you know, when you're in school, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, our principals and teachers are committed to um, creating as normal uh, a school day experience um, as possibly uh, can be done, socially distanced, of course, um, and with health um, uh, mitigating um, protocols put in place. But when you get to school on Monday or Tuesday or Thursday and Friday, you should expect to run through um, your schedules um, as, as close to as, as, as normal as possible. Really what will happen in, in the remote um, learning piece, and I think it's really important that people understand that there's a difference between what we consider to be virtual instruction mm -hmm. versus remote learning. Um, and remote learning has a fair amount of independent um, um, practice and work that's associated with it. So I would say this, our teachers are gonna really work um, in, intently on getting students prepared on Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays with new content, new instruction, but also setting them up on Tuesdays and Fridays uh, with expectations, guidelines, work um, needing to be done. Where can I go to ask questions? Where can I go to get assignments off of Blackboard or Google Classroom, whichever form you're using? So that there's a clear understanding and expectation about what will happen on those remote learning days for the AABB model. I would say the other question too that I feel like we're getting now is how is this experience different than when schools closed in March? And we do want parents and students and staff to feel like this is a different experience. It we've is. had time to prepare, we've had time for our teachers to have training, and so we do expect that our fall will be much different than our spring. Absolutely, and our teachers um, will physically be in the building. Um, that's a fundamental difference between the spring. Um, our staff being in the building eliminates connectivity and technology mm -hmm. issues on the teacher's part. Um, there'll be set times where parents will know when, when teachers will be engaged in their, with their students, whether it's the face-to-face -face model or the 100% virtual model. Um, we'll just be able to support our staff better um, and our, our you should know a little bit more clearly, a lot more clearly actually, um, when you can expect um, to have access to your teachers, whether it's on the 100% virtual model. And that's a great transition then to the next question was what takes place on Wednesday? 
Um, so Wednesday was a um, great proposal coming essentially from the safety perspective, which was that it would give us an opportunity to do a deep cleaning of buildings. Um, and But the other thing that it provides is that it allows some access to teachers um, with virtual office hours or time for teachers to do team planning and collaboration, um, to check pacing, to develop curriculum, to get lessons uh, planned. So Wednesdays actually will be a great day for teachers to be able to plan and um, work together. Correct, and we'll, we'll publish those office hours um, so you'll know um, when teachers will be in the building. Uh, we really want um, there to be uh, an opportunity for you all to submit questions that you know that teachers will have built in time during the middle of the week where they should be able to address um, any of those remote learning types of questions um, that could come up. So I, I think that's a wonderful day to put into the middle of the week. Mm -hmm. um, um, that gives everyone an opportunity to pause and, and just kind of say, okay, what are my questions? Mm -hmm. I know when I can go, where I can go to get those yeah. questions asked. I think, I think another good. aspect of that that we've talked with principals about is making sure that that time is not available just for students, but also for their families. Correct. That if you have a question, perhaps you have a technical difficulty happening at home, yeah. how can we be available to you during that time so that you don't get stuck and can't move forward with you know the next Correct. day or um, you know how can you know we'll make sure that you can communicate with us during that time period right. as well. No, I agree. That's that's absolutely right. Yeah. That's the right. next question then does sort of talk about <laughs> uh, internet access. So I think it's a good opportunity for us to talk about devices and internet connectivity, and we know that that was a challenge in the spring and how we've planned differently for it in the fall. Um, so one of the things I think we've been committed to here is to make sure that any student who needs a device at home would be provided one. Correct. Um, and that I think we just are committed to that all students have what they need at home, whether that be a Chromebook or that be a hotspot, right. that we want our students to feel supported and connected to our schools when they aren't with us. Right. Conversely, we, um, we've gotten a couple of questions today about what if having a device and a hotspot still makes it difficult for me to connect. Um, one of the things in working with principals um, that we will be able to do um, this fall that we conceptually talked about doing in the spring but things moved so quickly is that we there will be an expectation on Tuesdays and Fridays that if, if you have connectivity issues, whether we give you a device, you have a device, hotspot or not, is that we have to set you up with the ability to, to receive something um, hard copy. And so if you, if you are in a situation where you have a device, you don't have connectivity, regardless of what we give you, it's gonna be really important that you reach out as we get closer to the school year um, to your teachers, to your principals, to let them know, hey, I, I, I absolutely cannot access um, um, uh, connectivity. And so then we have to have a plan B to kind of set you up to, to, to work with that. And we will do that. And I think that kind of brings us to the end in terms of maybe the questions we would cover here. But again, maybe you and I can think of some things that have come in just recently. But to sort of uh, conclude um, the frequently asked questions segment here with um, about how long we'll be on the blended schedule, which is to courses that our intent is that once it's safe to return to school um, as normal. Right, and I think our board um, has decided that right now that that will be through at least October 16th. Um, our plan is to revisit and look at data, um, you know, periodically on a, on, a, on a weekly slash every two week basis to really ascertain how things are going. But from an instructional standpoint, uh, we're planning on being on that model through at least the middle of October. Um, and then we'll get guidance and, and if we need to continue, we will. Um, but those who are participating again in a 100% virtual model, if you get to a point and we are able to return, and you choose to continue that model, um, you'll be able to do so. Okay. So I think that kind of brings us to the end, unless you can think of anything we've been getting kind of in the last couple of days that might speak to the blended um, option. Well, you know, I, I think it's really important, to, you know, for folks to understand that right now we're working with our principals and our staff. Uh, we've got focus groups working on um, really helping our schools and we'll help our communities to understand that what we want for remote learning is for it to be an extension of what happens on those two days of face-to-face -face instruction. And so it's important to understand in a remote learning environment that there is an element of independent practice and work that will occur. Um, it doesn't mean that you will not have support or be able to get your questions answered. Um, but we're gonna be here to support folks. Um, 
we will be outlining um, in conjunction with principals um, a clear set of parameters that as principals share information with you as we get closer to the school year that you'll have a clear understanding about what's going to happen on Monday and Tuesday okay and then what's going to happen on Wednesday Thursday and Friday or Monday Tuesday and Wednesday depending on what group you're in uh, what's going to happen in those remote learning days but our goal is to make it as project-based as possible mm -hmm. um, you know we want people to be able to manipulate things we want these things to be completed where kids should be able to do it independently with minimal support should be able to be done without technology um, if, if, if necessary um, and they should be able to come back into school the following week um, with some understanding of um, what it is that we wanted them to do and with questions that, that we know teachers will be engaged in and helping with that. Anything you want to add? To so that? I just think the last thing that comes to mind is that if you're a parent, for example, whose child participated in our summer school learning experience, that was an example of what we expect for remote learning. Things were hands-on, things were project-based, and so if you had a good experience or you have right. feedback from that right. experience, we're hoping that that experience informs where we go for the fall. Right. So if you have good or um, other or other feedback to provide us from right. summer the, from the summer learning experience, we're hoping to learn and grow from that. Right. And I'll I'll conclude my comments by saying I, I really want um, to make sure that folks understand that we need for you to engage the FAQ process, um, our reopening um, link on the website. Um, as we start to build out schedules and, and expectations and parameters, that information is going to be housed there. Um, I, I want to reassure folks um, on behalf of our superintendent, our school board, and all of our staff, and knowing that um, on or before August 10th, um, I can assure you that um, this information will become really clear um, that between August 10th and August 21st, uh, that we're going to be providing opportunities for our teachers to um, engage in professional development that will allow them to feel better about engaging their kids beginning August 24th. Uh, please be patient with us. Um, we're working through this. Um, we, we largely have the questions identified. We know where we want to land and, and what we want to frame. Um, but please make sure that you continue to engage the FAQ document and process because that's where we're trying to center folks in getting the answers to the questions, but you also have an opportunity to post your questions there if you see a question that has not yet been asked or answered. Sounds great. You good? Yep. Thank you all uh, for the opportunity to engage you in this process. Um, we're all here to, to um, assist and answer any questions that you have. Um, thank you and stay safe.